The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, and welcome to the Nanoproof series webinar presented by Aculon. Today we're going to be talking about improved IPX7 level waterproof technology. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Edward Hughes. I'm the CEO of Aculon, and we are the producers of the Nanoproof series. I'm joined here with me today with Mary Gattuso, who's our Senior Business Development Manager responsible for our electronics business. Over the next hour, we'll give you an overview of Aculon, introduce you to some of the Nanoproof products, and particularly the Nanoproof 7.0 and 8.0. Mary will take you through the application methods, a competitive comparison, and share with you some case studies of examples of companies that implemented the Nanoproof series products. And we'll finish with a question and answer session. This webinar will be recorded and it will be available to everybody afterwards. We'll also be sending copies of the presentation to everybody who registered and who has attended today. As you have questions, please enter them into the control panel. And then at the end of the session, we'll try and tackle as many questions as possible. So please answer the questions as you come to them, uh, and we will deal with them at the end of the session. So Aculon is a leading provider of surface modification technologies. We like to think of ourselves as surface solution experts, where we develop, produce technologies to modify a broad variety of surfaces, metal, glass, polymers. And we have a pretty broad suite of surface modification technologies, including hydrophobic and superhydrophobic, oleophobic, hydrophilic, and even adhesion-promoting treatments. These treatments all are very thin, and they are easy to apply with minimal equipment. One of the points of differentiation of Aculon technologies is that we don't do anything in a vacuum chamber or a vacuum deposit methodology. These can all be sprayed on, wiped on, or dipped. We have three business units, electronics, oil and gas, and specialty. Today we're going to focus on electronics and talking about protecting printed circuit boards. Our business model is that we produce the chemistry and we ship that chemistry worldwide either directly ourselves <clears throat> or through our distributors. And we have distributors around the world. In Europe we have partnered with a company called CapLink that covers all of Europe. Uh, in Asia we have many distributors in Korea, China, Taiwan, Malaysia, Philippines and Australia. So why do we need waterproofing on our devices? Well, as you all know in real life, whether it's the consumer or the operator, often these devices can get damaged. Sometimes the unit is just exposed to the outdoor environment, whether it's lighting or outdoor electronics, junction boxes, etc. Rain, irrigation, and humidity can potentially damage uh, that device. If it's a consumer, uh, often they could get splashed with water, whether it's your laptop or other uh, devices, your phones. Um, and then obviously in an equipment environment, whether it's industrial or medical, often those uh, devices are exposed to wet working conditions. And as a result, you know, water on those boards can cause failure and the boards to short. So for the last several years, we've had a series of products called Nanoproof. A nanoproof is designed to protect you, the devices, from water pr uh, protection, from humidity to full water immersion. We have a range of products here. Yeah, they all utilize proprietary technology. And as you'll hear later on, they surpass competitive coatings, not only in terms of performance, but in terms of their ease of use. All the application equipment is readily available and affordable uh, and can be installed in your facilities around the US or in Asia or in Europe. And we provide a range of treatments to allow you to select which treatment is most appropriate for your performance requirements uh, given the thickness and the application and economic needs that you want for your project. And as you can see, uh, this product, which was introduced last year, has already won the 2016 Circuits Assembly New Product Innovation uh, Introduction Award. Now, some of the benefits of the Nanoproof series uh, for you would be, obviously, to reduce product returns due to water damage. The, the products will be protected. Secondly, in your production processes, we hope that you'll be able to increase your yields as using a Nanoproof series product 
allows you to rework it. Whereas if you're using a conformal coating, as you know, it is very difficult and challenging to rework a board that has been treated with a conformal coating. All our treatments are safe, non-toxic, and can be used in a factory environment with little or no masking required. And they are affordable. So when we work with our customers, one of the things we want to understand early on is what level of waterproofing is required. Some of you will be familiar with the IPX standards that give a scale uh, to allow you to decide which level of IPX is most appropriate for your product or for your device. As you can see, IPX level 0 has no protection at all. And then it increases all the way up to IPX level 8 where you can be protected against continual water submersion in underwater conditions. So it's very important to work through this chart to decide which is the appropriate level uh, and to pick one that suits the product and the environment the product is going to see. Because as we've learned in doing this over the last few years, getting to higher IPX levels can be challenging. It's a little bit like mountain, mountain climbing. The higher the peak, the more challenging it is, the more training and the more specialized equipment. And so we've seen that as we've tried to basically deliver IPX levels at increasing high, high levels to do that, it's complex. Given our experience with customers in a variety of fields, uh, we've developed a recommended level for IPX requirements for some of the common devices that we've seen and that we work with. Uh, as you can see in the middle here, level four, which is protecting against splashing water, whether it's a camera or an electric drill or headphones, a laptop, television or Bluetooth headsets, you know, level four seems to meet the requirements for that device. Going down a level, hearing aid, something we do quite a lot, uh, spraying water for if you are concerned about water being splashed on or sprayed on from a shower, uh, then level three requirements seem to meet that. Uh, going up, if you are exposed to potentially outdoor situations where you could have irrigation systems, uh, you, you know, such as outdoor lighting or junction boxes, etc., being exposed to those irrigation uh, water jets, then obviously level five. And then all the way up to level seven where people are particularly mobile device companies are looking for you know that one meter immersion for 30 minutes and in working with many mobile device companies over the last few years you know these requirements are pretty challenging uh, our initial work was just testing with IPC boards and we could deliver the level seven quite easily but when you get to a populated board in a device uh, it's much more challenging and so we've been working hard to develop a solution to that and we're pleased to announce today that we are introducing the Nanoproof 7.0 and 8.0. Both of these treatments offer extreme levels of IPX7 protection and they often come on the first round. So we're very excited to have these uh, and we have been successful in treating devices, uh, mobile devices that survive 30 plus minutes uh, in water and the submersion. So let me uh, take a moment and show you a couple of videos here. So let's start with uh, a video of an iPhone uh, that has been submerged in water. And as you can see the timer has started we've immersed this into one meter of water and for time purposes for this video we'll just show the highlights of this as the clock is running, 20 minutes now, and then 30 minutes. So this phone was submerged in water for 30 minutes, taken out, and all the functionality was the same as before. Let me show you another device, which is a Samsung smartphone, and you can see a similar result. This phone was submerged into a fish tank at approximately a meter level. And again, as you can see, the timer is running.
and again 30 minutes and this could have continued on for some time. So we're excited to have Nanoproof 7.0 and 8.0 because it can deliver these high level of performance requirements. And frankly, it's like a step ladder being able to enable us to climb that mountain much quicker. So we're very excited to have that. It also has a number of other features and benefits. It's a thixotropic formulation allows the, the board to be coated which of complex complicated geometries such as a populated printed circuit boards. And the coating doesn't slump or create thin areas which could lead to failure that we observed in some of the earlier treatments. Uh, it's also very easy to apply via film coating and we'll show you that in a few minutes. Uh, and it can be dip or flow coated as well. And it maintains many of the benefits that we have in the rest of the Nanoproof series line. I, no or minimal masking required. Uh, rework remains possible. It's safe and it's affordable. So let me ask Mario to take you through a little bit about the Nanoproof series and the different products we have and to talk more about some of the application methodologies. Here we go, Mario. Thank you, Edward. Okay, so I will get into some more details on the Nanoproof line and some of the application methods and uh, some case studies as well. So the entire Nanoproof series is designed to protect water from a range of exposure conditions, from humidity and incidental contact to, as you saw in the videos just a moment ago, full immersion for 30 plus minutes in water uh, at salty conditions. There's a, a range and there's an entire range of uh, performance uh, from the Nanoproof 1.0 all the way up through the Nanoproof 8. Uh, with increasing barrier properties. All of these treatments are easy to apply, no vacuum chambers required, and can be applied through a variety of means including spray, film deposition, uh, dip coating, and a couple other means. Here is a detailed chart that shows the differences between the various nanoproof coatings. I won't get into ever and everything as this is going to be uh, mailed to everyone who's in attendance and so you can access this. It's also on our website um, for your reference. It details what the type of chemistry each of the nanoproofs are, uh, what sort of contact water contact angle or repellency you can expect from your treated board, um, and also a level of oil repellency. As you can see with the 5.1 and the 7.0 those are oil repellent um, so that may be important for people who have applications where there's going to be exposure to oil or solvents or other uh, non-aqueous liquids which could neg negatively impact their board. Uh, details the ranking, uh, quantitative ranking of barrier effectiveness, and then also uh, general ideas on what the thickness should be, as these are all deposited via spray or dip or other various methods. The thickness is going to depend on how it's applied and how much material is put down. But in general, if you do a spray for the 1.0 through the 5.1, those are the thicknesses you can expect. For 7.0 and 8.0, which need to be flow or film coated, you can expect uh, the thicknesses labeled there as well. And those can be dialed in if a specific thickness is required. Um, that is flexible. Again, in general, as you saw on the last on the last slide, as the thickness goes up, you do get the better barrier properties, um, higher levels of protection. So if a thin coating is required, oftentimes it's difficult to get that most robust performance. And if you do need the most robust performance, uh, some thickness getting into the 50, 100 micron range is, is necessary. All the Nanoproof products come with a standard UV tracer so that when they are in the production equipment, which all come with UV detection lights, as the material is being applied, you can easily quanti qualitatively confirm that the coating has been properly applied with the UV dye. There are several, several application methods. Four of the main ones are spray, film coat, 
dispense and dip. All of the technologies can be dip applied. All of the technologies can be dispense applied. Dispense is often used for spot treatment or addition of material to certain areas that are highly sensitive. The Nanoproof Series 1, 3.5, 4.0, and 5.1 can all be spray coated. However, you cannot utilize the 7 or 8 for spray coating due to their thixotropic nature. So for 7 and 8.0 in a, a mass production scenario, we would recommend using a film coating setup. And it is confirmed compatible with film coating. The Nanoproof series is designed to be simple. So that means that there is minimal masking, in, case no, in most cases no masking. So you can either avoid masking by doing selective deposition, or in many cases you can treat the entire board. Now depending on which Nanoproof is selected, you can treat the entire board, including antennas, headphones, push buttons, camera speakers, and even displays. Again, that depends on which nanoproof and how thick the nanoproof is going down. Uh, also for acoustic devices, uh, what the level of sensitivity required is. Um, and these are all on case-by-case -case basis. Now some information on the quantitative testing we've done to confirm the performance uh, with the IPC test boards. Uh, so these are standard uh, test boards. They are the way they utilize them is you apply the coating over the comb patterns. You then expose the comb patterns to whatever environmental conditions you're testing for. In this case, for IPX7, we're placing the comb patterns uh, submerged in water. <clears throat> you then run a voltage through the board and through the comb patterns, and you measure the current leakage, and you also uh, qualitatively observe the comb to see if there's damage. It's very, very... Um, readily apparent when the comb patterns have been damaged. So as you can see here on the left, these are uh, measurements of current over time of an uncoated board, uh, IPC test board, at 3 volts, 6 volts, and 12 volts. And you can see almost right away with every single one there is a significant uh, measurement of current leakage, which is essentially the board is failing uh, it is corroding, oxidizing, and it would be a, a failed device if it were a real device. When you zoom in and go to the right, where we have added um, three, uh, three measurements with the green superimposed over the other two because they're all identical, you can see that there's no current leakage on the material that is being tested at 3 volts, 6 volts, and 12 volts. And then on observance of those, bo those boards, you can see that there was no no damage, no rust, no oxidation, um, as opposed to the uncoated boards, which are nearly destroyed. So now we'll get into some of the application options for the different materials. So the application options for the 1.0, 3.5, 4.0, and 5.1 are all very similar, as all of these materials are very, very similar in, their, in terms of their liquid nature. They can all be spray applied. And we have information here on some of the PVA equipment that is recommended. Uh, we utilize the PVA FCS 300 valve uh, at our facility, and several customers utilize that as well. There are other also valves from other companies that are compatible as well. So if, if you already have equipment, you can certainly look at using that as well. There is information here on uh, manual coating systems and also recommended automated coating systems. Each of these materials can also be dispense applied if you are spot treating areas. Uh, they can also be dip applied, which is a great economical option when zero equipment is, is required uh, or there are small volumes that need to be treated and it is okay to treat the entire board. Now the application options for 7.0 and 8.0 due to their thixotropic nature, which makes them a bit thicker, uh, gives them some different options. So for a large volume process, it is recommended that you utilize film coating, which is very similar to spray coating. It can be automated and it can be scaled into mass production. So we do recommend 
that option for for large volumes and we have the PVA FC 100 CF valve recommended and the manual and automated systems are also similar to what would be utilized for the spray equipment so you can actually use the same spray equipment just with different valves uh, for applying this material this material can also be dispense applied for spot treatment of sensitive areas and it can also be dip or flow coated which is an economical option if no equipment is desired or there's small volumes uh, unfortunately the 7.0 and 8.0 are not compatible with any spray equipment that we've tested to this point so now I'll show you a quick video uh, that shows how the conformal coating equipment works So it's a fairly simple device. It's essentially a robot that patterns over the boards and sprays the areas and it can be programmed to utilize different valves, to utilize different materials. So you could actually utilize two treatments with two different valves on one board and one machine where you're spraying one, one coating and then dispensing another coating in sensitive areas. As you can see here, the options for treatment are very flexible. As simple as a manual dispense device for bench top testing, batch automated equipment to fully inline custom equipment where you are hands off, the devices are just being processed in line. You could be treating both sides of the device, multiple, tr multiple treatments on one device. Uh, it's a very, very flexible option. So now we'll get into a competitive comparison on some of the other options that are out there from con other liquid conformal coatings to treatments like Paraline. Several advantages to the Nanoproof series over traditional conformal coatings. Much of the traditional conformal coatings only provide incidental protection, whereas the Nanoproof coatings are proven to provide full submersion protection in numerous devices and also on the IPC test boards. The Nanoproof series has a flexible range of application options from spray, film coating, flow coating, dipping and dispensing and is not limited to one application method. Uh, in addition, minimal capital equipment is required if desired. All the Nanoproof lines are designed to be done in a continuous inline process. There is never any batch treatments required. In addition, one of the huge benefits to the nano clear, the Nanoproof line is that they allow for push-through connectivity, which means that you can actually code over electrical connections and then make the electrical connection anytime after, after the part has been coded. Even after it's dried, you can still push through and make that electrical connection. That is with the majority of the treatments. Some of the treatments do dry to a hard film, so if you have any questions, please reach out to me uh, about that information or that information is also on our website. <coughs> All of the nanoproof treatments are very easy to rework so there's no concern about rejected parts if there's an issue and there is no masking required. You can even you can even selectively dispense in a manner that if, if you do not absolutely do not want to treat keep out areas you can selectively dispense. And then, of course, all the nanoproof treatments are safe and non-toxic. There are also several advantages over paraline coatings, which are still commonly used in, in many industries. The paraline coatings are often only achieve up to IPX3, maybe IPX4 level of performance, whereas the nanoproof range of coatings can get you anywhere from IPX4 all the way to over seven, IPX7. In addition, the nanoproof treatments are very flexible in terms of application. They can be done in line, whereas the perylene is, 
is a very, very slow batch process that can take up to five hours per group of treatments and then also requires significant labor of masking and demasking before and after the treatment. So it's, it's complicated, it's slow, and it's expensive from a labor standpoint, which the Nanoproof eliminates all those issues. So now we'll get into some case studies on some of the successful programs we've had with the Nanoproof line of products. So we had a customer approach us wanting to treat a Bluetooth headset. <clears throat> they were looking for protection from sweat and splashing water. They didn't need full immersion proofing. They were looking for a minimum of IPX3 with IPX4 desired. So we worked with them. We treated their parts. Uh, in addition, they did, they did evaluations at their site to finalize the process. After about six months of back and forth and testing and qualification, uh, we decided on Nanoproof 4.0, found that that met their needs and their budget. Um, and the entire device is sprayed with the PVA valve, excluding the audio speaker to avoid any acoustic impacts. And that device passes the IPX4 qualification at the customer site. And we've done a good deal of work on wearable, wearable devices as well. <clears throat> a very good fit for, for our technology. So we'll get in here to uh, one of our recent programs that we've gotten into production. Customer came to us looking for protection from sweat and splashing water. They did not require full immersion. They just needed to protect from rain and use in the shower. So they required IPX4 with IPX5 as a desired target. So we collaborated pretty heavily with this customer. We treated their parts by a spray for initial testing. And after a few rounds, we identified that there were some very high voltage components that required some special attention. So we were able to dial in after about six months that this, this project needed a dual, dual approach. So the majority of the board is sprayed with the Nanoproof 4.0. And then several of the sensitive areas are spot applied with the Nanoproof 5.0, which 5.1, which has a more robust uh, characteristics than the 4.0. And it, it allowed them to achieve their desired IPX5 uh, level of performance. <coughs> Another great area for us is the outdoor home electronics. As, as pretty much everything starts to become interconnected uh, with the internet, um, there are numerous devices coming out uh, along these lines. Uh, so this particular customer was looking for a device, looking to protect a device that was going to be installed outdoors. They wanted to protect from splashing water from rain and also irrigation equipment. So due to the, uh, the irrigation equipment requirement, which is uh, higher levels of pressure than just rain. They were hoping for IPX5 at a minimum with IPX6 as a desirable performance. So after about nine months of collaboration, we were able to work with this customer uh, directly and at their facility and determine that one of the more robust options at the time when this, when this product was worked on, which was 5.1, was needed to protect the high voltage components. So excluding the audio speaker, speaker and optical components, all portions of this device are sprayed with Nanoproof 5.1 using the PVA spray valve. And then electrical connections are made using a diluent solvent. And this, this board uh, passes the customer's IPX5 qualification requirement. Another great application for us is hearing aids. And we're actually working with several customers in this area. They're usually looking for protection from sweat and splashing water, not full immersion. Uh, simple protection, IPX3, IPX4 levels. And in most cases, the desired performance with hearing aids is, is relatively easy to apply. Uh, customers are able to just obtain the material, uh, treat the internal parts of the boards, and then do their testing. Um, and using Nanoproof 4.0, they exclude treatment of the audio speaker and spray all the electronics, and that gets them to their IPX4 desired performance. 
<clears throat> now, pretty much every cell, major cell phone manufacturer is looking for IPX7 level performance, and we are working with almost all of them. So they're looking for protection from sweat, splashing water, high pressure water, and if possible, full immersion proofing. So IPX6 or up to IPX7 levels of performance. So we're currently working with several cell phone manufacturers for the IPX7 level of performance. And that is, uh, has precipitated a lot of the testing and design work that has led to the development of Nanoproof 7.0 and 8.0, which are showing extreme amounts of promise <coughs> uh, for cell phones and other devices which require IPX7 levels of performance for the customer. So these, these treatments are in test with several customers and we would encourage you if you have an application uh, that needs that level of performance to, to consider uh, either working with us directly or sampling some material and trying it in your program. So something to keep in mind for selecting the right level, the right material is every device is different and needs testing. So you're not always going to get to the desired level of performance or success right away. So there's many considerations, the thickness, the cost, uh, handling requirements, and what manufacturing process you want to utilize. But working directly with us, we can usually uh, find a common ground of price, performance, and process. And especially with the new 7.0 and 8.0 materials, we're finding a significant level of success um, for, with projects where in the past would have taken months of collaboration, we're getting to the desired performance much more quickly. So as, as we mentioned, there's, there's multiple application methods and in general, you can treat the entire board. So it's a very easy process. So there's a few ways of working with Aculon. So we can, a good way of working with us is we can uh, trial you materials and you can treat your parts and run your own testing and we will do our best to provide you with the technical support we can. A better way of working is if you're able to send us boards, we can then treat those boards using our experience and our equipment and then send those test boards back to you uh, for the initial phase and then from there can proceed with either treating boards or sending you material. And ideally, the best way and where most customers find the best, the best success is when we collaborate directly and we set up a design of experiments together, we run, run a range of experiments with different treatments, different process options, test, review the results, and iterate and optimize, and that's where we find the highest levels of success. So, as Edward mentioned earlier, this presentation is going to be emailed to all attendees. It's also going to be hosted on our Nanoproof page. You will receive a recording of this video. You will also receive a PDF of the, of the slides here, and you will also receive links to all the videos that we shared. If you want to discuss how we can work together or would you like samples of Nanoproof, or if you have any questions in general about Nanoproof, you should contact me. My information is here. My email is gattuso at aculon.com. So in summary, Aculon is a leading supplier of nanoscale repellency technology. The Nanoproof series has been qualified and is now in production on numerous applications. It's easy to apply and cost effective. It provides numerous options based on your performance requires, requirements and is proven to outperform almost all competitive technology. Aculon, in addition, sells nan the Nanoproof series globally through our range of distribution. So with that, we'll begin uh, to take some questions here. So I would encourage you, if you have any questions, please fill them out, and I'll begin addressing them in just a moment. Okay, the first question is, is there a spec on the impurity level of the water in the iPhone test, or is it distilled water? 
so no, this is not distilled water. This is just regular tap water. Um, we're based here in San Diego, so it's probably um, a bit harder water uh, than than most than most uh, <laughs> most tap waters. Um, we do a lot of our testing in in salt water at five percent solution. We do not do testing in distilled water because that would not be um, it would not be that aggressive of a as a test. Uh, next question is, what's the longest period of time that you've tested electronic products underwater? Um, Edward, do you, can you refresh my memory? I know we've done a test for either six or eight hours in some sort of salt solution. Yeah, that was a salt solution that we tested for uh, eight hours um, for one customer, so that was an example of that, and that passed that test, and then we, we pulled the uh, device out of that. Okay. Yeah, so significant amount of time in salt water. Next question is, would having a combination of conformal coating and the nanoproof coating help improve the amount of time underwater? Um, that's, that's a question mark. It's, I mean, it's, that's something we've not tested. This is designed to be used by itself, not with a conformal coating. I don't see a negative impact with using our treatment on top of another conformal coating. Uh, but we have not tested to determine if, if there is a uh, mutually beneficial effect or if it would just be uh, non-additive. Uh, next question is, how is the adhesion of plastic and glass substrate? And also, do you have abrasion tests? Uh, the nanoproof treatment line, all of them, will apply to pretty much any substrate. So if you have glass or plastic parts on your boards, they will coat that. However, as far as abrasion tests go, the, the, these treatments are not abrasion tested as they are not cross-linking materials and they are not designed to have abrasion durability. They are designed to go inside of, a, inside of an en encasement as a last step. So these are not significantly abrasion durable treatments. They're designed to have an outer protective uh, container that keeps them from getting abraded away. Uh, the next question is, does Aculon 7 or 8.0 contain toluene? Uh, it's a good question. The 8.0 does contain toluene as the solvent. The 7.0 does not contain any toluene. It does contain a fluorosolvent diluent. Next question is, can these materials be applied on boards that contain flux? So you can treat a no-clean flux board with the Nanoproof series, but we always recommend, if possible, that you're treating a clean board. So we do have some customers who treat boards that have a flux, flux on the board, but it is not recommended. And we do recommend if you do that, that you test to confirm. Uh, next question is, how about the minus 40 to 85 degrees C performance? Uh, all of the nanoproof materials are stable at these temperatures. There is no known lower temperature limit for them. And they're stable to 225 Celsius. So they're fine within that temperature range. Next question is, are there aerosol style application methods? Or is the handheld device shown in the presentation the smallest application method? Uh, so at this time, there are, we are considering putting some of the materials into an aerosol type application, but those are not available. So they are just sold in bulk liquid. The handheld device is the smallest application method for spray, but you can also apply this via dip, dispense, and flow coating if you're doing small batch treatments. Uh, next question is how about camera application and abrasion? Uh, these treatments, except for the very thin ones, are not meant to be applied on the camera optics for any sort of protection. If they do abrade, they will, they will not be visible, so they will just abrade away um, with no visual impact due to their thin nature. We do have other treatments to apply for optical applications uh, for cameras, etc. But yeah, the nanoproof is designed to protect the printed circuit board rather than the optical components. 
<laughs> Next question is, for the iPhone and Samsung videos, I assume you applied these devices off the shelf. How did you coat them? Uh, so that's correct. These are off-the-shelf uh, devices that are not protected, and if we test them as a control, they literally, literally within the a second they touch the water, they, they fail and short out. And a few minutes in, or if you were to pull them open, they're corroded and, and destroyed, and that's not treated, of course. Um, so yeah, we, we open those boards, the devices, and uh, we treated those boards as we would treat a board like any other project they were working on in a production scalable manner. So the, the treatments were applied only to the PCBs and then the boards were reassembled. Um, so that's, that is how we uh, achieved that level of performance on both the iPhone and the Samsung devices. <clears throat> uh, next question is how are the nanoproof coatings cured? So these are air, these are air cured devices or materials, so they cure at room temperature. Depending on which coating and how thick it's been applied, after 5 to 10 minutes, they pretty much set, and after 30 minutes to 60 minutes, they're, they're pretty much hardened and done curing. Now they can be accelerated by being placed in heat at 60 to 70 degrees Celsius, which will probably accelerate the dry speed to 5 to 10 minutes, but if that is needed for a time time reason, uh, but that will not add any level of performance as there's no cross-linking going on. Uh, next question is, uh, do you have any experience with application over silicon domed LEDs? And we've done a significant amount of testing with these treatments on LEDs, so I would encourage you to reach out. It does depend on the application, um, whether there's a fit or not. Uh, but the levels of performance are, are very good, so we would encourage you to reach out and we can help you with that program. <clears throat> Let's see. Another question about overcoating LEDs for automotive applications. Uh, yes, we've had a significant amount of success uh, treating LEDs, uh, so I would encourage you to reach out as well. We can help you with that program. So it looks like that's about wrapping up the questions. I'll give it another minute to see if any other temp any other questions come through. So if you have anything you want to hear about, please do shoot a question over. Another question is I if I applied this to a domed camera lens, would it adversely affect optics and clarity? That depends on which nanoproof series material and how it's applied, uh, which will impact the, the optical performance. So please reach out on, on that application and we'll see if we can help you out there. Let's see. <clears throat> Next question is how expensive is the application equipment uh, for example, the handheld device. Uh, so the application equipment is very reasonably priced. It's the valve that is used to spray the material in addition to a film coating valve, I believe run approximately $2,500 and then the manual uh, coating equipment is about $1,000. So it's about $3,500 for a manual setup. Um, and there is uh, about $30,000 for the automated equipment at the base level and as you go up in features the, the price of course will increase. Uh, next question is how do you control the thickness of 7.0 or 8.0? Um, that is done so these are spray up when it's film coated the, the film coat valve uh, controls the amount of material going down. Um, if you are dip coating it or film coating it uh, that is not an application method where you're going to have uh, it's not going to be massive amounts of variation, but you will likely have um, variation in thickness. So for most people, that's not an issue, but if it is an issue, then you would want to use a film coating, a film coating valve. <clears throat> Let's 
that wraps up the additional amount of questions I got. If anyone has anything else. get it through and we will answer. Okay, so with that, we'll wrap things up. Uh, we'll be sending this out shortly to everyone. The links for the video will be there, the PDF will be there, and also the videos. So thank you very much for attending and please reach out to me if you have a program you want to work on or have any further questions on the Nanoproof series.